Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're looking at what is the worst graphics card ever released, or well, certainly in the last decade. Before I continue with that though, imagine you're a gamer on a seriously tight budget. I know it's likely that a lot of you won't have to be too creative, after all PC gaming is just something that most of us do to unwind after a day at work, so relax a bit, have a bit of fun. So not everyone can afford to invest hundreds upon hundreds of dollars in PC gaming when there are other bills to be paid. You might also be a young kid getting into PC gaming and computing in general for that matter, and that can be tough for some. Most parents are going to be more interested in the idea of buying a console than a computer, which I feel is a mistake, but let's not get into that here. Point is, these people don't have endless money to spend on upgrading or building a new PC. So they're after an affordable graphics card, and more often than not, they're also just getting started on their PC gaming journey, so they aren't super experienced when it comes to buying a new graphics card. Some light research will show you that sub $100 US graphics cards, such as the GT 1030, is capable of delivering over 60 FPS in Fortnite at 1080p using competitive quality settings. So for most that will be enough, and although something like a GTX 1050 is only about $30 US more, the GT 1030 does what you need, so why spend the extra money? Of course we could come up with a few good reasons, but we understand why so many people buy these entry level graphics cards. So you've seen the benchmarks, you know your system can produce at least 60 FPS with the GeForce GT 1030, so you buy one for the typical asking price of $90 US. However, what you don't know is that not all GT 1030 graphics cards are the same, not even close. You could buy a GT 1030 that will indeed spit out over 60 FPS in Fortnite at 1080p, or you could be getting one that barely keeps the frame rate above 30 FPS. The problem for you is they both have the same name, the exact same name. You might expect the version that's around 50% slower to be called something like the GT 1030 LE or GT 1030 SE, or better yet, a completely different name like the GT 1020 for example. Instead though, Nvidia has decided to grossly mislead customers into thinking all GT 1030 graphics cards are equal. So what exactly is going on here then? Well, more than a year ago now, back in May of 2017, Nvidia released the GT 1030. As the most affordable GPU in the GeForce 10 series, it came at an MSRP of just $70 US. It packed 384 CUDA cores, clocked at 1.28 GHz, with a boost frequency of 1.47 GHz. And the GDDR5 memory was clocked at 1.5 GHz, and using a mere 64-bit wide memory bus, provided a bandwidth of 48 GB per second. The GT 1030 wasn't blowing any socks off, but it was what it was, an ultra-affordable current generation GPU. However, as of March 2018, budget shoppers could no longer buy a GT 1030 and know exactly what they were getting, at least without taking note of the type of memory used. This is because Nvidia quietly introduced a DDR4 version using the type of memory modern desktop PCs use as system memory. This is a massive problem because DDR4 memory is significantly slower than GDDR5 memory. Firstly, the memory base frequency has been reduced by 30%, and as bad as that sounds, the end result is far worse. GDDR5 memory has two parallel links which provide double the I.O. throughput when compared to DDR4. This means the memory frequency has actually been reduced by 65%, and because we're still using the same 64-bit wide memory bus, this also means the memory bandwidth has been reduced by 65% down from an already anemic 48 GB per second. The end result sees the DDR4 version of the GT 1030 with a 16.8 GB per second link to its 2 GB memory buffer. That's only slightly more bandwidth than the miserable DDR3 version of the GeForce GT 730 released back in 2014. Then for whatever reason Nvidia has also cut down the core frequency, dropping the DDR4 version down to 1.15 GHz, which is a 6% reduction. Okay, so the DDR4 version has way less memory bandwidth, but has the same name and looking around online seems to come in at about the same price. So as a potential GT 1030 buyer, how worried should you be? Nvidia didn't feel the need to change the name, so can it really be that different? Well, we're about to find out. For testing, all graphics cards were benchmarked on our Core i3 8100 test system with 8GB of DDR4-2666 memory, and also thrown in for comparison is the Ryzen 5 2400G APU using its integrated Vega 11 graphics with 8GB of DDR4-2666 memory. Okay, let's get into the results. For testing Battlefield 1, we've gone with the low quality preset. 
Now, normally we test the low end graphics cards at even APUs with the medium quality settings in this title, but at 720p, the GT 1030 DDR4 version was barely able to deliver playable performance. Using the low quality preset did allow for 51 FPS on average, and that doesn't seem too bad. That is until you realize the GDDR5 version is 104% faster. Moving to 1080p, and now the DDR4 version of the GT1030 can't even achieve 30 FPS using the lowest possible quality settings. Are you kidding me? The Ryzen 5 2400G APU was 64% faster, and way worse than that is the fact that the GDDR5 version, the original GT1030, is 118% faster. 118%. I'm not even sure what to say about that right now, so let's just move on. Using the lowest possible quality settings in Prey at 720p, the GDDR4 GT1030 did manage to average just over 60 FPS, and again that meant the GDDR5 model was roughly twice as fast. Upping the resolution to 1080p, and now the GDDR5 model is more than twice as fast as the pathetic DDR4 version. Again, we see that with the lowest possible quality settings enabled, the DDR4 version can't even achieve 30 FPS on average. Far Cry 5 is a new title and it's fairly well optimized, but if you bought the DDR4 version of the GT1030, you're going to have a bad time. Even at 720p using the lowest possible quality settings, we couldn't average 30 FPS. Meanwhile, the GDDR5 model was almost 80% faster and that's the smallest margin we've seen yet. Here are the 1080p results and really, what can you say? Even the GDDR5 version of the GT1030 sucks here, but the DDR4 model, it's really something else. Pure garbage is what it is. Although Dirt 4 was playable using the lowest possible quality settings, it was still a far cry from what the GDDR5 versions are capable of. At 1080p, the DDR4 version dips well below 60fps, while the GDDR5 model was able to keep the frame rate above 80fps at all times. I suspect a lot of the GT1030 graphics cards currently being purchased are by those wanting to get into Fortnite, and if true, those who got caught out by the DDR4 version will be livid. Results like these will show the GT1030 pushing over 100 FPS at all times using the medium quality settings at 720p. The DDR4 version though, struggles to keep the dips above 60 FPS, but I guess it's playable so there is that. Of course, most won't want to play at 720p if they can avoid it, and avoid it they can't with the DDR4 version. Here we see just 38 FPS on average while the original GT1030 spat out an average of 66 FPS. Moving on to Rocket League, and here we see just 60 FPS on average at 720p using the in-game quality preset named Quality. In this instance, the GDDR5 model was almost 90% faster with 114 FPS on average. Then at 1080p, the GDDR4 GT1030 scrapes by with 32 FPS on average, and at this more memory intensive resolution, the GDDR5 model was 122% faster. Just ridiculous that is. The last game we're going to look at is Rainbow Six Siege, and here we see, even when using the lowest possible quality options at 720p, the DDR4 GT1030 is good for 73 FPS, which isn't bad, apart from the fact that the GDDR5 model is almost 80% faster with 130 FPS. Then once again at 1080p, the seriously limited DDR4 model's performance is heavily limited, and here we saw an average of just 39 FPS, making the GDDR5 model 65% faster. Now, not that it matters in the least, but here are the power consumption figures. Because the memory is choking the GPU, the DDR4 version uses less power, reducing total system consumption by 16%. That said, given we often saw a 50% reduction in performance, that actually makes the DDR4 version significantly worse in terms of performance per watt. Wow, where do I even start with a product like this? I'm actually still coming to terms with the fact that this product even exists. How the bloody hell does this exist? Actually, I should be clear about this. As rubbish as this DDR4 version of the GT1030 is, I don't have too much of a problem with its existence. It probably shouldn't exist, but the fact that it does isn't the real issue here. The real issue is Nvidia had the goal to call it a GT1030 and not a GT1020, for example. I don't even know how they can get away with doing that. As we saw, it was often 50% slower than the GDDR5 version, yet it has the exact same name and price. Again, how is this possible? 
It's not like we were trying to cripple performance or test under some unusual condition either to make it look worse than it really is. Almost all of the games tested were done so using the lowest possible quality preset at 720p and 1080p. The GDDR5 model can actually handle higher visual quality settings at 1080p and doing so would further cripple the DDR4 version. So we're actually showing a best case scenario if anything. I can't imagine how upset I'd be if I'd been saving up bit by bit for weeks on end to upgrade my graphics card only to end up with that thing. I'd never trust Nvidia again. I also couldn't imagine ever buying a GeForce product for the rest of my life. And I'd also be very upset with the retail that sold me the product, even though I'd probably realize at the time that it wasn't necessarily their fault. Actually, that led me to reach out to a few of our local retailers to see what their take was on the DDR4 version of the GT 1030, and do they ever see any kind of backlash from this sort of thing? For obvious reasons, I won't name any of the retailers, but I can tell you what they told me, and they all said pretty much the same thing. Firstly, the big issue for retailers is that they often don't know the exact models that they're buying. And I know that sounds a bit silly, but it does make sense. The people in these purchasing roles often aren't computer geeks, computer nerds, whatever term you'd like to use there. And they pay attention to things like product codes and pricing, not the type of memory the graphics card uses. They'll see that GT1030 stock is low and they'll order more GT1030 stock. And it's not like each brand only has a single GT1030 model. Uh, even before the DDR4 mess, most brands offered four to five different models. It sounds like a lot of the people in these purchasing roles are unknowingly bought up DDR4 GT1030 stock, just assuming it was the same GDDR5 models that they've been buying for the past year. Uh, the specs are often supplied and then just copy and pasted onto the website. And again, this isn't anything unusual. Almost all of them admitted that if it wasn't for the controversy around the spec change, they would have been none the wiser and it would have been just pure chance if they happened to notice the change at all. They also said unless the model name has changed or there is some obvious difference, this stuff generally goes under the radar. This then causes massive issues for these retailers as they are unknowingly selling their customers inferior products and that's not something they want to do for obvious reasons. A reputation really is everything in this business. So Nvidia aren't just hurting their customers, they're also hurting the retailers as well as their own board partners. This really is a bad look for anyone involved. Again, I really don't know how this kind of thing happens in the first place, but yes, I am painfully aware this isn't the first time Nvidia has done something like this, and I'm also aware that AMD recently dabbled with the dodgy naming as well, though nothing as horrific as this. Anyway, this kind of crap has to stop and I hope big YouTubers, you know, the guys with 1 million plus subs and other large media outlets do their own testing and show their viewers and readers what's going on here. I think Gamers Nexus were the first to the punch on this one, showing actual benchmarks late last month. So good on them for doing that. Great work as always. We were a bit slow getting this dumpster fire down under, but it's here now. So fellow Aussies, be warned. We realize Nvidia aren't gonna to be too happy with this video and we won't be surprised if we don't receive samples for the next generation GPU launch. Be a real shame if that is the case, uh, but if it is not the end of the world, we'll just have to buy the GPUs ourselves. And on that note, if you would like to support us directly and gain access to a few cool perks like our Discord chat, monthly live stream, then you can check out our Patreon account. The link is in the video description. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.